Okay, so I know that a lot of you will be joining us at present, um, and we'll just have a few minutes where we allow people to join. Um, we'll have a bit of a little window where we can get people into the lesson itself, into Slido, where we can actually have um, some comments, some questions about what's happening today. I can see already some people are joining us. Where possible, guys, please don't leave your name as anonymous. Please put your name and your score so that we can see the people that are actually contributing to the English Virtual Club um, today. Today we have Miss Townsend, okay, head of English, delivering um, our English Virtual Club. Now I know that you've had maths and science so far. So Miss is rounding off the last of the core subjects by no means the least. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of kind of interesting little snippets of what to expect from English when you join the academy. A few housekeeping bits first, as you can see on the screen. If you can scan with your mobile phone, so open up the camera, scan that code, that QR code in front. So literally lift your phone, scan the code, click the link it gives you, and that will take you to Slido. In the profile, you can actually change your name and you could put your name and your, your school and you won't have to keep saying it every time you comment. That will probably make your life easier. If there is an issue with the code, sometimes QR codes can be a bit temperamental. Go to slido.com and you're going to type in the number underneath, which is 2384897. And I can see a lot more people are starting to add in their names in the chat, which when Miss starts delivering, I'm going to take over um, the chat and let Miss deliver English and feedback some of your, your great questions and your great answers. OK, just as a reminder, I was in maths last week. I am Mr. Muse. OK, your prospective head of year group for next year. Some of you probably know me from the video with Miss Freeman, where we introduced ourselves to you. And from the back end of the Science Live two weeks ago today, where we were looking at science experiments and what to expect in science. So I'm just going to take you quickly to the website. And we will, from there, we will go back to the Slido just to get the last few people in so, so that they can join. So if you're ever thinking, and hopefully we can all see the website in front of us, I can see it perfectly. What you need to do is when you're concerned with transitions is scroll over Academy Life, go on to year six transitions, as you can see on screen. And we've got a few things. Firstly, we've got the welcome message that I just mentioned, which is a video of myself and Miss Freeman, which kind of introduces us welcoming you to the start of the year. We've got our welcome letter that has a little bit of information where you can click on, you can see the letter for some further information. If you want to look back at any of the live clubs, for example, you may have missed one or you may have missed something in there that you wanted to just look at. You've got some examples with science and maths. And obviously, after today, you'll be able to click on English as well. Now, attached to English today, very, very important. Things that you're going to use alongside the lesson is, first of all, we've got a link to the worksheet. So if we click on the link that says worksheet in the virtual English club, you'll be taken to this here. OK, with this, Miss Townsend will guide you throughout the lesson when to look at certain things in the worksheet. We can then look at your answers after today's session and shout out some people that have done some really good work ahead of next week's session, which is an art session, so that we can shout those people out. If you want a differentiated worksheet for a little bit more help, there's a second link which you can click on, which will give you a little bit more guidance so that you can follow the lesson at your pace. And lastly, and I want to make sure that we can access this, because I know there was a slight issue last week with the checkout, but something we do at the academy, because we are quite friendly when it comes to using technology, we have a checkout at the end of lessons where we can then assess your work 
for every single lesson and feedback to you. When you click on the checkout, what will happen is it will take you through. You need to be signed into an email account, okay? And then you're gonna answer the questions based on what you've learned in today's lesson, okay? And as you can see, multiple choice questions that will be gone over, mostly in the lesson, but also if you miss anything, you can use some of your own knowledge as well, because I'm sure you do a lot of literacy at primary school. And please make sure that you do submit. So I'm just gonna have a look on the chat and just make sure, are we able to access the worksheet initially, guys? Can we access the worksheet? I've got some chat open here. Can we access the worksheet? I'm even going to put it in as a question. Can we access the worksheet? So you might see me pop up. It says Mr. Muse. Just double check in. We can. Thank you, Isla from Belmont. Thanks for letting me know. Just wanted to make sure. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the Slido page back on for the people that might have joined us a little bit later. I just give you a minute to join on Slido and a reminder that Slido allows you to leave some comments, ask some questions so that we can feed back. And then after that minute, I'm going to hand over to Miss Townsend and we're going to kickstart with some English work in the English Virtual Club. So last few little bits so to access there. Oh, we've had a bit of an issue where students are saying that they cannot type onto the document. We can access it through the website. The page is just yellow. Can anyone just inform me in Slido? Has anyone been able to type onto the worksheet? Has anyone been able to type onto the worksheet in the yellow boxes? If you click in there, you should be able to type. Let's have a look, see if I can change it. Okay, so what you can do, guys, is make a copy. So you need to make a copy of the file so you've got your own version. So if you see here, it goes on, you click File, Make a Copy, and that will give you your own version. Okay, make a copy of it. And then that will allow you to have your own input. And then I can collect all this work from you after the session. Okay. So for anyone who was struggling with that, you can do that. Make a copy with your name and your primary school, just to make it easier for us to access who's doing what and checking your good work. Okay. So. I'm going to stop talking now, something that you'll probably hope happens quite a lot next year. Um, and I'm going to hand over to our expert in the room, Miss Townsend, to take us through some fantastic English. Over to you, Miss. Thank you, sir. And good evening, Year 6. I'm really, really excited to be here and to introduce you to English, which, of course, I think is the best subject here. Can I just have um, people in the chat box? I'd love Sophie to read out some of this, but why do you love English? I really want to know. And also, what's your favourite um, book? So I'd love you just to get the conversation started. I want to know what you love about English so we can bring more of this um, into secondary school and into your education. And what's your favourite book? So just a real quick round for this, maybe give you about 10 seconds to type. And then um, if we can look through and see what people are calling out. Oh, well, I can see someone said Murder on the Orient Express. It's a very sophisticated book. Very, very good. Chris has said, because I love um, writing and reading. So do I, so do I. The Alex Ryder series, Harry Potter. I mean, yes, if you ever want to come to my room and talk to me about Harry Potter, I promise you, I always, always will. And actually, there's quite a few teachers that are not ashamed that they're still, as adults, are massive Harry Potter fans. 
creating stories. We do lots of creative writing here at English, lots and lots of creative writing. So that's going to be right up your street. David Williams, he's fantastic. Definitely. What I really love that's coming through is that we're clearly interested in reading. And that's the big part of English. You will be reading for both your literature and for your language. And they'll just have different skills that will help to equip you um, for um, life in school and to help you with all different subjects as well as the wider world. So the more that you're reading, um, the more you're going to enjoy English, which I know I can see clearly some people are fantastic at doing already. Marcus Rashford, you are the champion. Um, well, I think he's fantastic, so I haven't read that. But yes, I kind of want to read that now. So thank you for that. Definitely. All right, if we can go into the next slide, and I'm just going to talk us through um, what we're going to be doing today. This could be a sort of typical English lesson for language. We've got two different types of English in secondary school. English literature, which is a little bit more um, the Harry Potter. Um, and we've also got language, which might be a little bit more the Marcus Rashford. So reading someone's autobiography. So we've got two different types, the fiction and the nonfiction. And we'll get to, to look at both. Today, we're going to look at travel writing. And the reason I chose this today is because English is all about using your imagination. Why don't we go and travel somewhere into your imagination today? I'm sure that through maths and science, if you've had a look at some of these um, virtual lessons, you'll be aware that we have check-ins. But if you haven't, welcome. And this is our, our check-in. What it is simply is your introduction to the lesson. So it just should be something quite simple, like a true and false, what we're doing now just to get you um, engaged with the lesson. So in your worksheet now, can you just complete a true or false um, for travel writing? And I give you about sort of 30 seconds to do this. And there's a challenge on there for those of you that are, are running ahead with it, which is to list as many different types of information text as you can. So you've got the different statements there, thinking about true or false. When writing to inform, you must always be writing for a newspaper. Do you think that's true or false? Reading information has to be boring. Let's see if you're going to get um, five out of five, about 10 seconds. And again, I'll be really impressed if anyone gets onto that challenge. Just saw Sienna come in with English is my favorite subject. Love that. Of course it is. Okay, so our answers, check if you've got um, four out of four or five out of five, sorry. Um, the first one, when writing to inform, you must always be writing for a newspaper. No, okay, for travel writing, you might be writing in the form of a leaflet or a pamphlet or something like this doesn't have to be a newspaper and you might find in your GCSE you'll actually be writing um, for a pamphlet. Writing to inform means that you are um, aiming to educate someone on a particular topic. Yes, you want to give them some information about the place that, that you've been to. Okay, so that would also be true. Um, you must ensure you know your audience. That is important who you are writing to. That is also true. When writing to inform, you do not need to write in full sentences with accurate punctuation. Okay, that is false. One of the things that we will continue to do with you at secondary school is make sure that you've got good spelling, punctuation and grammar. Reading information has to be boring. Of course it doesn't. And you're going to see today how you can make it really, really exciting with lots of metaphors and um, really good use of vocabulary. Those of you that got onto the um, challenge, lots of different types of information of text. Um, well done if you said that you can have things like autobiographies or you could have um, leaflets, pamphlets, as well as newspapers as well. Okay, let's have a look down at the main part of our lesson. So um, thinking about um, travel writing. Just before we move on to that, so I can just see I've got the medals that are coming up. One of the things that you'll notice a lot in coming to secondary school is we've got a point system. And I've got these different medals for who's really going to be pushing themselves the furthest. 
So you can see we've got a bronze medal, which is everybody. We're all going to identify the features um, of how to write to inform. So that's something that everyone's expected to do. But you want to get those points. You want to get further on to the silver medal. Okay, to understand features of writing when writing to inform. So understand how writers actually um, use things like metaphors, similes to create really um, interesting writing. And then some people, those who are really pushing for gold, um, will be able to apply that into their own work as well. Not just be able to spot it, but also they'll be able to, to put it into their own work as well. So we quite often have this um, system, which will allow you to get um, more points. And you can go up with lots of prizes in the school. And I'm sure um, Sir would tell you more about that, about all the different kinds of prizes that you can get. OK, we can move on to the next slide, please. So anywhere in the world, travel writing. This is a particular genre of writing in which the author describes places that they have visited um, and their experiences while traveling. Okay, Personally, a job that I think would be a really, really exciting job, and maybe a job that if you love English, you might actually you know, want to go on and do something to think about. So for the moment, just look at the, the pictures to give you some ideas. Okay, we often look at pictures just to get our imagination flowing. Can you think about somewhere that you have traveled to in the past? Okay, this could be London, it could be the seaside, or it could be anywhere across the world. What might you want to describe to others about where you have visited? What kind of things do you think you might want to um, tell people about? And I have um, a place where you can answer it in your worksheet. If you've got any good ideas, feel free to put it into the, the chat box as well. Okay, I'll give you one minute to do this. Okay, as always as well, we've got that challenge there as well at the bottom. Can you support these with techniques from examples? For example, if you wanted to talk about somewhere where you went, which was really, really hot, could you include a simile? The sun burned like a scorching fire that was out of control. So that's how you'd level up. If you're going to go for gold in today's lesson, that is how you would go for gold. Miss, we've had uh, Chris from Pelham Primary School, and I'll just say that clearly we think alike because one of the things he's mentioned is that we definitely speak about the food um, when traveling. So yeah. if it was me myself, I think that I definitely would speak about that. Guys, can I just say that if I know there's been some issues with the um, the worksheet, for some reason it's not letting some of you make a copy. Um, that's something we'll look into. Can I just say, though, guys, if that categorically is not letting you do it, another method is to download it and directly do it onto there. If that's still not working, OK, please do use the chat and we can get it kind of transcripted over. So we want to make sure we are getting your answers. That's the key thing for us at this stage. So just make sure if there's a real issue with that and you can't fix it from what we've shown you, please keep getting your messages in the chat. Back to you, Miss. Thank you. And I think that point about bringing in um, the type of food when you're um, traveling, that's you're actually informing people. That's linking back to what we're doing. So you've definitely um, understood the, the point of today's lesson here by actually including specific things that people might be interested by writing to inform. Definitely. Got a lovely simile coming in as well. So the beach and sea is as blue as a blue whale. So coming in where we're actually starting to think about how it's really natural imagery. I'm feeling quite at peace. Maybe I want to go there because I'm feeling, you know, the busy stress of the city. I now want to go somewhere where the sea is being described as being as blue as a whale. It feels really big and um, relaxing. Fantastic. Some great ideas coming through and lots of people pushing for gold, which I love as well by doing those similes and metaphors. Well done. Can we move on to the next slide. So today's task, you're going to prepare to write a letter to your family to describe a very specific place that you have um, traveled to. You can prepare to describe this using the experiences that you have and also some activities 
that will help to create the feeling that you've actually been there. So something that you can definitely show off to your, your parents or carers today about, even if you haven't been to this place, but about the possibility of going and what you've managed to create. So a thinking question now, can you recall any descriptive devices that you might want to use in your, in your letter describing this place that you've been? We've mentioned simile and metaphor already, but can you just think of maybe anything else that might bring a place um, to life? And for this thinking question, if you can write in the um, chat box, that would be great. Someone's coming straight in, Michael, with personification. That's a great one. Onomatopoeia, hyperbole. Clearly, primary school is um, well preparing you for secondary. This is fantastic. Personification, lovely stuff. And someone's given an example of personification. The blue sea danced with joy. Powerful verbs from Chris. Fantastic. Right, we've all got some lovely ideas. You'll notice then in your... Um, worksheet, you've got a list of different techniques. You've got simile, metaphor, personification, sensory language, and alliteration. I'm going to give you two minutes now. Can you have a go at writing those um, definitions? If you're in the differentiated one, then you've got the possible options down below. If you're not in the differentiated one, then um, you're going to have to give that your best go without that support. Fantastic, thank you. So those are techniques that we'll be using in English um, in both language and literature. Okay, your ability to know and spot what a simile is, a metaphor, use of personification, sensory language and alliteration will be really, really important um, in understanding English. So just a heads up, if any of you were potentially not feeling so confident right now in simile or metaphor, that would be something that you could do over the summer or ask your teacher now so you can go into secondary school feeling really confident. One more minute and then I will um, read out the answers and you can check to see if you've got your techniques correct. About 15 seconds more and I'm going to go through those techniques to so see if you can get all of them for um, five out of five. Okay, so simile is that comparison we've spoken about it a little bit before using like or as. Okay, we might be saying that the sun is like a machine to show that it's going round um, constantly. Metaphor is exactly the same as a, slim, as a simile, but it doesn't use like or as. So we might say the sun is a machine. It's just a little bit more power behind it. Personification, I've had loads of great examples of personification coming through. Um, and Michael, I'm going to use your one over mine because I think it's so great. Personification is when you give an object or something a human quality, um, something that an object can't do exactly. So, for example, like the wind whistled. Um, humans, we, we're the ones which have created whistling, not the wind. And we're giving the human characteristics. Sensory language is using anything to do with the five senses, and we'll be coming on to that very shortly. And finally, alliteration, 
this one might be the one that you didn't get, um, is having two words next to each other that start with the same letter. So a uh, sneaky snake, you had that, it really stands out. Okay, well done if you got five out of five. And again, don't worry if you didn't, but this could definitely be a little bit of homework for you to prepare you for um, year seven. Thank you, sir. Next slide. So we're going to pretend this is where we've all been to today. Why not? Looks absolutely dreamy. So where is this picture set, do you think? Put it in the chat. What sort of place is it? What sort of activities might you do there? Remember, travel writing, we're writing to inform about where we have been. Fantastic, Isla, coming straight in with Disney. I wonder if any of you have actually been to Disney, um, Disneyland Paris or any other Disney. Imagine it being quite sort of a magical place. Can you put down what kind of place do you think it is and what activities you think you might be able to, to do there? Fantastic. So Freddie says it's a magical place. So you would definitely want to get that across to the reader in some way. Okay. We know where it is. We know that it's a sort of magical place. So you're going to think about how you would use metaphor, similes, personification to, to make it come across as a really magical place. Great. And you would do things like want to like interact with characters. There's circus, animals, um, performances, arcade games. That's great. Um, to really think about all the different possible activities. Fantastic. Um, let's look at a headline next, please. So this is from a um, previous piece of travel writing. Disneyland tagged as one of the world's wonders. Again, writing, travel writing, info information writing should be exciting to read and grab our attention. So. Can you write down in your worksheets which method that we've just looked at um, is being used here to grab our attention? What is the effect of that method? Why is it being used? And what is the image that has been created in just this headline alone? Why might that appeal to the reader, make them want to read the information article or go to Disneyland? Okay, I'll give you two minutes. So I've just seen what Freddie's put. So black bold stands out and it's persuasive. It is. Can you think about that particular method that's used in the headline that really makes it catchy and stand out? And then think about what is the effect of it.
Okay, I'm going to give us the answers and see if you got something um, similar. So the method, and really well done if you got this, was alliteration. So yes, it's, it is bold and it is a, a headline, so it's going to be a, of a bigger font. But if you noticed world's wonders, that's alliteration because you've got the two letters, um, the two beginning letters of two words next to each other just really um, pops out at you. So alliteration. Uh, what's the effect of this method? Well, if you notice, the next time you're listening to any advertisement, it's used all the time because it's very, very catchy and it just sticks in your head more. So it's something that will be really um, eye-catching and it's used to grab your attention. What image is created here from the headline alone? Well, the fact that we are meant to zoom in on both the words world and wonders. We think about connotations of wonders, what it makes us think about. In the chat box, what comes into your mind, pops into your mind when we think about world's wonders? Because that's the effect of it. And once you can think about that, you've understood um, what's the purpose of using it. So why use the world wonders? Wonder who's going to get there first. Isla, fantastic. The Egyptian pyramids, it compares it to something which is um, incredible of a high magnitude, something which is full of wonder and magnitude. Yes. So it's already deliberately putting other comparisons into your head and thinking, this makes me think of the Egyptian pyramids. Therefore, it's creating this powerful image for me. Fantastic. Well done. Um, next slide, please, sir. Okay, if we then put it into a, a bigger context. So this is the opening of an article published just before Disney opened in 1955. I want you to identify methods used and the effects created. So we've looked already at one method, which was alliteration in that first headline. Now we're going to have a little look at a slightly bigger piece of text. And this is what you'll need to do in English. You'll need to look at a slightly longer piece of text and pick apart why does it make me feel something? Why does it make me want to go to this place, for example? Why is it making me um, feel a particular emotion? I'll read it to you as I'm doing this. In your um, worksheet, can you find the different um, techniques? the metaphors, the similes, the alliteration, the sensory language, and then you're writing into it um, what you think the effect of it is as well. So Disney's Magic Kingdom opens to public Monday. And you can also zoom in on particular words such as magic to think about why would we use the word magic. The Magic Kingdom of Disneyland long a dream and now a reality, will open its gates to the public on Monday. Probably never in history has any attraction, including world fairs, ever received so much advanced publicity um, as newspapers, radio and television have kept um, conceived so much in advance. Um, sorry, kept worldwide attention focused on the transformation of the Anhilm Orange Grove into the man's greatest attempt to deliver a land of make-believe. And when the visitors from all over the nation stream into Disneyland, they will find an advance notice about the Wonderland have far from told the full story. Disneyland brings to earth the dreams of childhood, the memories of long ago, and then delve far into the future. Okay, so what do you think is effective about some of that language? Can you just write down your answer and what you think is the effect of some of those techniques that we looked at? I'll give you, I think, another two minutes to do this.
Okay, essentially doing the same thing as before, but you're just now looking at it in a slightly bigger piece of text. give you about 15 seconds more and we'll go through some possible answers you might have got other ones and that's great I'll just give you some possible answers just as you can just check you're on the right path okay so one of the things you might have zoomed in on is the fact that it's called a magic kingdom, that itself is a, a metaphor. It's comparing it to something else. It's not really a kingdom. It's just a, a building. OK, a kingdom is like a whole um, country, like a whole land. OK, so it's a magic kingdom is a metaphor to make it seem more grand and more royal than it actually is. So you might have got a metaphor and really well done if you've done that. I'm just going to point out Isla's because she's put it in the chat. Hyperbole, sometimes known as exaggeration. It's not man's greatest um, attempt to develop a land of make-believe. Okay, so it is man's greatest attempt, like the most amazing thing in the world possible. Okay, it's something which is quite great, but would we say it's man's greatest ever um, attempt at making something? That's quite um, exaggerative as well. You might have also zoomed in on a couple of key words here. Um, long a dream and now a reality. So really exaggerative words to, to come across. Can we have the next slide, please? So we use the five senses in English a lot to help develop the experience of the reader. And you can see here, um, sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch, without actually bringing the five senses to your writing. It's really hard for the reader to be able to put themselves into your imagination. So on this basis, we're going to play a video for you. And I just want you to make notes of everything that you can see, hear, smell, taste, touch, so that when you come to your writing, you'll be able to bring it to life. So let's pretend we're going to Disneyland right now to be able to bring people um, to it. Disneyland, Southern California's $17 million playground dedicated to children, both young and old, opened its gates to the public today. These pictures were taken yesterday by Channel 8 cameraman Mel Forbes during a special preview showing of the Wonderland to invited guests. Views from a helicopter show the huge 60-acre playland. The park is the brainchild of Walt Disney and includes such creations as a Mississippi River showboat, a horse-drawn trolley, and Snow White's castle. 30,000 persons streamed through the park at this initial opening, and one had all he could do in some instances to keep from being crushed. But visitors, some of them familiar to many, like Eddie Fisher, accepted the inconvenience. From 4.30 to 6 o'clock in the afternoon, a live ABC telecast brought opening ceremonies to folks across the nation. It was presented over Channel 8 in San Diego. Then, Governor Knight and Disney led a parade of Disney's imaginative characters through the grounds. There was Alice in Wonderland, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and such famous persons as Davy Crockett, Bess Parker, and Annie Oakley. 
Disneyland hopes to handle 60,000 persons a day when it's in full operation. Officials say they hope to gross $10 million a year. Tickets are $1 for adults and 50 cents for children. The park has 35 rides and there's an extra cost to ride each one, starting from a quarter for adults and a dime for children. Disneyland. Really want to, you know, have that shared and we can call it out. Really think about the more things. If you want to go for that gold in today's lesson, it's much harder to bring about. Um, what you can hear or maybe taste. Okay, so we can probably point out what we can see. But if you really want to go for gold in today's lesson, then can you bring it to life for us? What you can actually maybe hear or what you can taste, because that's a little bit harder to do. I'll give you one minute. Give you some ideas around that as well there was a train there were horses so you would expect to hear things wouldn't you what smells or or taste could you imagine of like candy floss or something else that you that you would be able to hear that's great isla so the jolly parade of music the smell of mouth watering aroma of popcorn Michael's talking about the people. That's fantastic, Michael. Maybe you can talk a little bit more about, um, are they like rushing, screaming? What do the people sound like? Really good. Chris can say, uh, I can see millions of people like as big as the universe. So a bit of exaggeration in there, a bit of hyperbole. We're learning that. That's great. Miss, if I just jump in, um, always talking about food, clearly, but... I remember, <laughs> as you said, with candy floss and, and the overriding smell that probably lives with me from Disneyland is one, hot dogs, um, mm. and two, candy floss. So for me, the uh, the smells and ultimately the taste as well, because I would have obviously ended up eating it. So that's just something you might think of as well, guys, when you're there. If you've been there, you can draw upon past experience. If not, the video should help inform some of the things. And you may have seen some stuff on TV and on YouTube as well. Thank you. Lovely. And Freddie's saying I can sense the happiness from the laughter. It's almost like Christmas morning. That's a really good comparison, I think, to Christmas morning. Um, it is that sense of buzz and excitement. Um, this would make for great, great travel writing because you're being really exciting, you're using similes, you're using exaggeration, you're using all the senses that, you know, is personally making me, who's never been to Disneyland, really want to go. So that means that you're doing your job essentially, completely. What a great way, I think, to actually sort of come to the end of our lesson. What I just want to show you is what we would do in a normal lesson now, so I can just go to the next slide, is you would then have a go at putting all of this into practice by then writing your letter now i'm not going to do this now because that would be an independent sort of 20 minute task of you writing and us supporting but this is where you would end up you'd use all of the senses and the ideas from the video and your own experience your understanding from um the techniques that we would be using you'd be putting this into your own work to create a really really successful um piece of writing and you've convinced me to go to disneyland so you've done your job okay and that would be the end of our um, English lesson. So thank you so much, Year 6. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I cannot wait to see you walking around the corridors. Come and speak to me. I'm always very friendly. Um, and if you want to talk to me about Harry Potter, even better. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Miss. I was just saying in the chat there as well that I will happily receive some of those letters if students want to 
um, do a little bit more writing because obviously it's a bit of a snapshot as you as you've seen today, guys. But like Miss says, there's a great opportunity. Before I forget, on the screen you should be able to access um, the checkout. Just as a reminder, the place to find that is if you go onto the school's website. If you go onto the school's website, scroll across Academy Life onto Year Six Transition. And you're looking for the link at the virtual English club that says checkout. Click on that link. We want to make sure people can access the checkout. So if you just do that for me now, guys, and if anyone in the chat can just let me know that you can access the checkout, that would be absolutely fantastic. So if we can have a look now at the checkout, just see if you can access it because people that are Having good contributions to the checkout will be shouted out next week in the Art Virtual Club. So if you just let me know in the chat, can you access the checkout, please? Fantastic, Freddie. Straight in letting me know that you can access it. Absolutely brilliant. Just make sure, guys, we're answering that checkout. And I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. Whilst you're doing that, if you've already done it, start thinking of some questions that you may have for myself, put them into the chat. And then that way we can go through some of those questions before we wrap up our live session today. We've got a little bit of time. So just so that we can actually get some questions from you, maybe about English, maybe about school in general, maybe about what's to come in the coming weeks in terms of what virtual clubs we've got. So any questions, once you've done the checkout, pop them in the chat, guys. I have the chat in front of me. That's why you can see me looking down quite a lot because I've got it open in front of me and we can do it from there. So check out, ask your question. So keep the questions coming in, guys, and we'll do a few at once rather than the odd one. That way we can flow into a few more questions and get them answered. That would be fantastic. I can see, Lenny, I can see, Lenny, that you must be a bit of a sports fan. I'm sure you're looking forward to the virtual um, PE club, the sports club that we're going to look at at some point. In answer to your question, it's a very simple one, Lenny. We do a sports day towards the end of the school year when touch wood, very unpredictable, as we know in the UK, but the weather tends to be a little bit better. But we do indeed have a sports day where you can showcase some of your sporting prowess, which you would have obviously honed a bit more at the academy throughout the year. So we will have a sports day that is a big part of of the year for us and a lovely event to celebrate um, team PE and sports in general any other questions guys any other questions please put them in the chat please put them in there senior I can see that you've asked miss if she would teach you English there is a possibility because miss is an English teacher so as well as being the head of English miss does have her own classes. So there is a possibility that you'll be taught by a miss or one of the English team at the school. So it could be miss or it could be another teacher from Miss's team. A reminder whilst we're thinking about questions, OK, reminder whilst we think about questions. Miss just spoke to you about that little kind of task of writing a letter describing your trip to Disneyland. Now, for some of you, this may be something that is fabricated. You're, you're, you're making that up because you may not have been there, okay? What you could do is look at videos on YouTube about Disneyland and help formulate your, your letter in that way. If you have been there, you can draw upon your past experiences when you're writing your letter. And as I've put in the chat, I would happily receive some of those letters 
and I've put my email into the chat and I would love to see some of them coming in and I can then share with Miss Townsend some of your fantastic English work and you'll be people I'm sure to look out for in English when you're starting at the Academy in September. So please feel free to actually do that. Any more questions, guys? We've got a little bit of time. I can see we're a bit quiet on there. Any Harry Potter fans in the chat then? I know some of you were talking and Miss was referring to Harry Potter. Have we got any Harry Potter fans in the chat today? Just put a, a yes in the chat if you are. I want to just see how many fans we have of Harry Potter in there. Other books are, of course, available. Any Harry Potter fans in the chat from today? Sienna with a big yes straight away. I'm sure you're going to have many conversations with Miss Townsend and the English team. They love Harry Potter. Yes, I love The Cursed Child too. Fantastic, Isla. Anyone else, guys? Anyone else a big Harry Potter fan? Okay, before we start wrapping up, I just want one thing. That's fair enough, Ruby. Not everyone's a fan of every book, okay? But I like what you've done there. You've said you're not a huge fan, but you think they're okay. And that's really, really useful because sometimes we won't necessarily like everything, but it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. So that's really, really good, okay? We've got Michael, not really a fan. Probably like different types of book, Michael, and that's okay as well. When we're reading for pleasure, we call it. When we're reading, in a sense that we want to really, really enjoy it, it's a good opportunity to find a niche, find an area that you like, okay? Now, you've probably heard my voice quite a bit today, and I'm going to stop talking again and hand over to Miss Shallow, who many of you would have met before. Oh, my goodness. So you just put me on the spot. She's giving me time to get myself ready. Oh, hi, yes, six. I've been in the background all along. I was the one presenting the slides. So I could see your slider comments as well. So I was behind the scene. I mean, itching to come forward. I'm thinking I'm missing you all. Right, yes, yeah, six. Can we just put our hands together just to show Miss Townsend some love for the English session today, please? I want to see those claps coming through, like lots of them in the chat. Well done. A lot of you actually came on today. You had your name and your primary school. That was fantastic. Loved it. I'm like, I can see our usuals as well. A um, few familiar names and, you know, um, primary schools. And yes, yeah, six, can I tell you one thing that I'm looking forward to? I am looking forward to seeing your checkout scores and I'm looking forward to being behind stage this time next week and hearing Mr. Mules shouting out those shouters. But those of you that got five out of five, those of you that got four out of five and those of you that got three, I can always go as, you know, as slow then as three. But I'm just looking forward to just seeing your names being shouted at your primary schools as well. So it's always very important to make sure that you include your names in everything that you do for us and your primary schools. When the shout outs do come through, um, you know, you feel really, really, really celebrated. I need more claps, yes, six. I need, if you have to really, really go back and give us some more claps. Yes, Michael, I'm loving that. Michael, what primary school are you from again? I remember you saying it at the start. I, I'm loving the claps, there's so many of them. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the session today. It's been fantastic. Just learning those keywords. And my goodness, not only are you scientists and mathematicians, you're also excellent in English as well. So amazing. Now, I really think for those of you taking part in the session today live, I think you need to put your hands together and give yourself a round of applause as well because you've been fantastic today. So let's hear those claps or let's see those claps coming through. Oh, lots of them. Okay. Thank you for that. So, Michael, maybe next time when you join, don't put your surname. Just put Michael and then your primary school can be your surname. Yeah. So, for example, if I had to present my screen now and then show all the comments to the audience, we don't have to worry about your full name being on there and all of that. Who is looking for all more claps coming through from Isla and Sienna as well? Well done. Miss Townsend is going to be so happy when she watches this part of the show. Um, 
Right, so who here is looking forward to September? I want to see thumbs up. Is there an emoji for thumbs up? There must be an emoji for thumbs up. Who is looking forward to September? I know I am. All the teachers here are looking forward to it. Um, they've all been watching the videos from maths and um, from English. They've seen the Slido comment and they've seen how enthusiastic you, um, you all are. So believe it or not, they are amazingly looking forward to receiving you all. Right. So who is looking forward to your transition days on site here at BA? So that's going to be in the first week of July. So who is looking forward to those two days here at BA? You get to come into the school. You get to go into your lessons. You get to be BA student for two days before you start in September. Let's see some thumbs up. Even Mr. Muse is looking forward to starting in September, to be honest, because he really wants to start his whole primary school or secondary school journey all over again. I think we all kind of feel that way, like, oh my goodness, I want to be here right now in this lesson, being a student and interacting like this. Excellent. So we've got Ruby's looking forward to it. We've got Chris from Pelham is looking forward to it. We've got Sienna's looking forward to it. Hamida is looking forward to it. Hamida, obviously another person that was here last um, session. Chris, I know you were here last session, um, session as well. Ruby, I think you were as well, weren't you? I remember um, coming across your name. Well done for adding your primary school as well. Ayla, you are going to meet some amazing people here at BA. There's going to be over 300 year sevens, okay? So lots of friends to make, lots of new people. So if you think about the people in your primary school right now in year six, you're going to have a handful of them coming over, plus all this pool of new people that you're going to be getting to know. Amazing stuff, amazing. We've got three more minutes left. Um, we're going to, if you have any questions to ask, now is the perfect time to get them in. There's a question about bullying. We are anti-bullying here at BA. We have zero tolerance for it, okay? So your teachers, your pastoral um, support um, staff members, literally, if we actually just have a, a sniff of anything that looks like remotely like bullying, we investigate it thoroughly. Mr. Muse knows how to do this very well. He gets his uh, Sherlock Holmes little, um, you know, uh, glasses, hat. Yeah. And he literally looks through and reads through every incident report about that incident. Okay. And if there's any trace of bullying, Sel will probably talk more about this because this is what he does on a day-to-day -day base. So during the day, he's not, he's not, he doesn't smile this much during the day because he goes around, you know, he doesn't go around looking for bullies. No, literally zero tolerance when it comes to bullying year six in um or at BA. So you don't have to worry about bullies. And we do talk to young people and we let them know if anybody feels like they've actually witnessed somebody else being bullied, report it through our um, incident form system, okay? School dinners are the best hair. I, I can't really say certain things because a lot of you are going to be excited, but your parents might not be that excited. Friday is Friday. Friday, yeah, so it's literally um, fish and chips, chicken and chips, yeah, that's Fridays. We do have, obviously, a healthy selection as well. Um, yeah, the food here, beer, is amazing. Uh, the young people, parents, if you're watching, you've really got to talk to young people from day one and literally show them how to to spend that money because the food is so amazing some people have a full meal at you know a break time because the food is so good and then they have a you know a full meal at lunchtime as well because the food is that good is there a cultural week yes so last year we had an amazing um whole week of cultural um diversity week it was amazing we had we literally covered all the different countries that are represented here at BA our student leaders were the one that actually put the cultural week together um so yeah we do celebrate cultural week here and I'm guessing your primary school because it's cultural week coming up soon isn't it um Ruby I'm not so sure about your question is it the third and the fourth How much are the school meals? Um, I think they're about, is it three pounds 20, sir, for, for a meal? I'm not 100% I'm not sure about that. 
Yeah, and that's quite a full meal as well, Miss. That's obviously the main. You get a little pudding as well. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and a drink. Drinks. Yeah. Okay, so break time here at BA usually be at eleven thirty. Um, however, for our year seven, you'd have a an extended transition period. It used to be for the first, just for the first term. But this year we've carried you all the way through to our current year seven. They'll be in year eight when you join. They still have break at um, 11 20, 11 25. And then lunchtime will normally be at 1 10. They get to go to lunch from one o'clock. Okay. So you can email the work back to, to, to Sir. Sir so actually put his email address on um, in one of the chat comments. Sir so might just add that once again onto the chat. Or you can email it to Miss Townsend. So it's going to add um, that into the chat as well. So we don't have any card payments here. So you'd have to have your um, Bexley Heath cards instead, your lunch passes, and your parents will top them up via what we call parent pay. You have the same thing in primary school. Yeah, so you'd have a, a lunch card. So it wouldn't be like your bank card or anything like that. It's probably two pounds fifty. You're right. Um, I, yeah, it's either two pounds fifty or it's three twenty. It's three pounds twenty if it's gone up. Right. So the email address is out there. So not to worry in regards to um, how much the school dinners will cost. I will get a confirmation and we'll talk about that next week. Next week's session. Okay. Any other questions before we bring today's session to a close? Who's going to send in the last question? Right, Mr. Mules, in the meantime, do you have anything to add? Just want to say absolutely fantastic, Miss. I was I was quite blown away with the amount of knowledge uh, the students had on specific vocabulary in English, uh, mm -hmm. things like metaphors, coming out with onomatopoeia, similes. It was really, really, really lovely to see and um, that all the students were, were partaking actively. Um, and that's what we want to see, guys. We want to see you continuing to do that each week because each week is different. Each week is a snippet. And that actually comes on to your question, Freddie, where you say, do we have different subjects? And if so, what days? Now, you will have a timetable when you get to school. So I can't tell you exactly what day you'll have certain subjects just yet because you will have a timetable to follow. And that will be all part of your process when you first get here, showing you where to go. And very quickly, you'll pick it up. And what happens is you'll have a certain amount of lessons in a day and you'll go from lesson to lesson or lesson to break and then back to a lesson. And each day will be slightly different from the next. So you get a nice rounded curriculum of different subjects. So you definitely will get to learn a big variety. Isla, in terms of art club, I'm going to check with Miss Curzon, who is the head of art for what you need, because you're right, it can be quite specific for art. I think Miss is probably going to keep it quite basic in terms of what you're doing, because we're not going to expect you to uh, get the acrylics out. Um, so what we can do is pencil and paper would be the go-to, in my opinion. Um, and I'll get a confirmation from Miss as soon as possible and get your parents emailed just in case you need anything specific. But I would say a pencil and paper will probably suffice. Yeah, definitely. And if there are any sort of like equipment that you're needed, what we'll do is we'll pop them on um, the web link to, on our web page. So right in that in the area that you can see on screen. OK, um, yeah, six, we can sit here all day. Um, how many people per class? Class sizes on average are about, say, 30 students. You write with pens and you will use an exercise book or a digital book. Okay, Freddie. Right, we can stay here all night, all day, so we would love to, but we've got to bring the session to a close. I'm going to pass you over back to Sir and Sir is going to bring the session to a close. Um, for me, it's bye for now, year six. Thanks, Miss. OK, just quickly then, guys, once again, I want to say thank you for giving us your time after school. Obviously, it's a little bit later than usual, 
and we wouldn't expect you to be doing lessons at this time when you're here. You may be doing homework in that time, though. So I want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you for giving us your fantastic answers. I really look forward to seeing you at the same time next week for Virtual Art Club. OK, thank you very much and have a great week at primary school. See you next Wednesday.